Hi, and welcome back. So we're going to do things a little bit differently this week. We are going to meet an artist and see his work at the same time. And this is for our Halloween week. We picked a wonderful artist who's still living, still current, still very relevant. He is the famous director, Mr. Timothy Walter Burton, otherwise known as Tim Burton. And it's hard. It would be hard to believe that you could be alive right now and not have seen his work. So this is the first time that we're really talking about an animator, uh, and, and this is pretty exciting. So let me take you through his work and his slides, and you can get to know him. So he was born August 25th, 1958, and he's still alive. So he's in his young 60s, um, and he's from Burbank, California, and he's a California boy, and he stayed in California. He went to, look at my cursor here, the California Institute of the Arts, which is otherwise known as Cal Arts. This is a fabulous art school. If you are interested in going into animation or doing uh, any type of illustration or computer, computer work uh, in the arts, um, this is a wonderful school to get to. <clears throat> and so if you click on this link in the slides that I've included of this, um, it'll take you right there so you can explore the thought of what would it would be like to go to college at an art school. So he is an animator, an artist, you're going to see later in the week, a director, producer, and screenwriter. This guy has just lived, eaten, and breathed art his whole life. So after he graduated from the California Institute of the Art, he began working as an animator for Walt Disney Studios. Talk about a fabulous job right out of college. He was uh, later let go, however, for wasting uh, resources, and they also thought he was very dark um, as an animator. Uh, but after he did the movie Batman, he was hired back when they saw how well he did. So as a child, Burton was engrossed with the classic horror movies of Roger Coleman, which featured screen villain Vincent Price. Um, at some point during the school day, I'll have to Google, you should Google Vincent Price, but listen to his work, or his, uh, his voice. It's Vincent Price's voice that you'll probably recognize more than uh, his image. Burton uses his unhappy childhood as an influence in his work. He felt like he was never really noticed in high school. He felt like he just lived such a bland suburban life. Um, he was unhappy, he felt isolated. It left him felt like an outcast. I think a lot of us sometimes creative people, sometimes we can relate to this. Um, he was oftentimes lonely and he was attacked by others for just being different. He gets his inspiration from German expressionist films and German expressionist art. And I will show you a little bit of that later on. Um, you'll see right away, like, oh, Burton's art, it's German expressionist art. I get where the influence came, comes from. He creates whimsical fantasy wor worlds. So whimsical meaning fun, but they're dark and melancholy. So you really sort of think about them. So what work is it? So this is Tim Burton, a very modern, current picture of him right now. And you might know him from Beetlejuice. And if you have not watched this movie yet, this is a great and quirky movie to get you in the mood for Halloween. So look, follow my cursor. The production piece, the movie, is Beetlejuice. But the concept art, I'm going to be pointing this out again and again, the concept art is... Beetlejuice over here. So concept art is you have a concept, you have an idea, and you're sketching it out, you're drawing it out. So this is the concept art that became the production art. Here we have the production piece, The Nightmare Before Christmas, and the concept art on the right-hand side for the production piece. Here is the production piece. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yes, Tim Burton did that one too. Here's the concept art. Look at his washy watercolor backgrounds. Um, and look how loose the lines are in, this, in his artwork there. Here is the production piece for the corpse bride and the concept art for the, for the corpse bride. 
Alice in Wonderland, concept art, concept art, production. So they did a wonderful job really capturing his concepts and putting them into production. Frank and Weenie, I love this little dog, and Frank and Weenie, production piece, concept piece. So concept art, let me move my picture out of the way. So concept art is a form of illustration to get across an idea for use in films, video games, animation, comic books, and other media before it's put into the final product. Concept art usually refers to artwork used to inspire the development of media products. Media meaning what's out on social media, video games, movies, that type of stuff. So let me move my picture again. Okay. So Burton has themes that run through his artwork. And his main themes and storylines are pretty obvious when you know what to look for. So you want to look for creatures that transform from one thing into another, quirky children trying to make sense out of weird adults or odd adults, and skin skeletons mixing, mingling with humans. So take a look for that as you look at his artwork. These are his sketches. These are his concept pieces. This is, I know this is the concept piece for Edward Scissorhands, another one of, and the Joker in Batman, another one of the movies that you've seen. Here too, look at these weird angles. Look at this poor little child. Look at this dog that's evolving into something else. Look at the, the, the angle, you know, and distorted proportions of his drawings. So, you can see very clearly, he his emphasis is on exaggeration, distortion, and fantasy. And you'll see that it that's very, very common in the works throughout history um, of the German Expressionists. And what is the German Expressionist? Here. Here is an example of the German Expressionists. <clears throat> so this is an artistic style where the artist doesn't try to do something concrete. This is not realistic painting. This is not still life work. They're not doing what is out there in the real world. But they are really just documenting responses to emotions and objects that happen within a person. They're just sort of exploring what's happening in our brains subliminally. And this work started um, in the early 1900s in Germany. Uh, before World War One, and um, and throughout World War One, and uh, it ended before World War Two. So that is German Expressionist art, and that is a little bit about Mr. Tim Walter Burton.